a little bit. Yeah, that's right. Good evening. Hope all of you are doing well. We are starting on Dav Chesam Aleph, about 10 lines from the bottom, right after the Allah has Kama Vekama, starting with Amar Rabbi Yochanan. And we're going to be going toward the bottom, most of the way down on Dav Tes, uh, Amud Beis, uh, enough to finish the page or for me to consider it a finished page. Then we'll be back on schedule tomorrow until the next time my schedule gets thrown off. Let's get started. Chesam and Aleph, 10 lines from the bottom. Amr of Yochanan Kolamastik is Atmo Milamata. Anyone who treats themselves as a tzaddik down here, Matzdikin Allah Hadin Milamala, then they raise the bar upstairs. You're going to act like a Chashuve Ha'am. Kodesh Baruch is going to treat you like the Chashuve Ha'am. And the Gemara is going to present three different possible sources as to how we know this is true. Source number one says the Gemara Shanei Amar. MS is here on the ground, and up in Shamaim, it's going to be, they're going to look out for Tzidkus as well. Like, like your fear here over here in this world is going to be like Evrasecha, like the possible potential anger in that world. Seven lines from the bottom, the Pasuk reads, it's a Pasuk from Yeshaya. Pagata es sasve o se tzedek vidrachecha. You're going to be doing all the good down here. Use kerucha hain. You're going to be remembered as that. Ataka tzavta. And you brought upon yourself the problem. Fine. So that's what the Gemara says. Three psukim. Amar of Yeshua ben Levi. Kol ha sameach be yisurin shabayin alav. This is a very high level. Anyone who's actually happy with the yisurin that are brought upon them, with the things that are difficult to navigate. Maybe Yeshua the Olam. This brings salvation to the world. Another one to add to the list. <laughs> we don't know what works. We should try them all. Uh, Shnei Amar. The end of this pasuk that we just read. Shnei Amar. Bohem Olam v'ni v'shea. Amar es lakish my dechsev. What does the pasuk mean in Shema uh, in Chumash when it says ve'atzaris hashamayim? Says the Gemara v'shash hashamayim ne'atzar and milah read at a time when the heavens are not giving forth water. It's domeli isha shemichabeles ve'ena yoledes. It's similar. I'm sorry. No. Uh, my Gemara removes those words. They're in parentheses. Two lines from the bottom. Yeah. Let me just get the actual my makom here. The it's a machlokas in the girsa. This seems to be the girsa of the marsha. Okay. So Talu Matar, two lines from the bottom, is in parentheses in the Oz Bahadar based on the Dufusim Yashanim. Some have only the version of Matar and not Tal, because Tal is not a problem. And Tal is always good. Matar is not, as we've learned. Anyways, the comparison of a lack of rain is Domali Isha Shemichabela, a woman who's Bechevlele, the same language, a woman who is uh, about to give birth but has yet to do so. We're going to see three comparisons between the lack of rain and childbirth. And here is number one. We have the language of Atsira, of stopping both by uh, by rain and as well by uh, a woman giving birth. Top of Chesim at base says the Gemara, Namra Atsir Isha. Where do we see by a woman the language of Atsor Shinemar Ki Atsar Atsor Atsar Hashem Be'ad Kol Rechem? A Rechem, of course, is a womb, uterus. And here we see the language of Atsira. And as well, the Namra Atsir Begishamim Dechsi Ve'atsar Sashamayim. Pretty obvious. We could have even anticipated that pasuk. Here is the second comparison between rain and uh, a childbirth. Namar leda beisha, benamar leda begisham, and we have the language of leda by both as well. Namar leda beisha dechsivat tarva teled bein, and benamar leda begisham dechsiv holy dove hits micha. This pasuk we're like familiar with. Beno sanzera lazorea velech. It's from uh, what is that from? Oh, from the Mincha. I know it's stuck in my head. I don't know where it's from. So that's Baholi Davi's Mincha. So now we see the language in both cases of Leda. And as well, Namar Pekita be Isha, and Namar Pekita be Geshamim. Namar Pekita be Isha, Dixiv, Vashem Pakad, as Sarah enabled her to have children. And Namar Pekita be Geshamim, Dixiv, as the Pasuk says, how does the Pasuk read properly? Pakada to Eretz Vatisho Kekeha. Uh, so we see the language is also referenced by the Maim as well in regards to Pekita. Okay, very good. My What's the second half of that Pasuk? 12 lines down, the Gemara says, Tana Kamin Kuba, it's kind of like some kind of tent, uh, some kind of Rashi. It's what Rashi says, it's an Ohel of some kind up in heaven. Yesh Barakia, Shemimena Geshamim Yotim. And uh, and from there, the water uh, the water comes out. Uh, again, a, a homily of sorts, I, I guess. 
There's no physical structures. We know that there are collections of water particles up in, up in the sky called clouds. Not all clouds hold a lot of moisture. Some do, some don't. Some are rain clouds, some are not rain clouds. We'll see what that means in a little bit. Uh, and that's what the Gemara says, that there's some type of tent uh, up in the heavens. Omar Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachmeni, my what is meant by the Pasuk that says, im l'shevet, im l'arso, im l'chesed, im tzaihu, that if it is for the rod, if it is for the land, and if it is for the kindness, kindness it will be found. So im l'shevet, if the rain is coming because of the shevet, because of the rod, usually a representation of someone uh, getting uh, getting a punishment that will heal them from their crimes. Then beharimu bigvos, that's a good place for the rain to go. Starts high up and drips all the way down. In the chesed, yimtzaehu, the word la'artso is removed by uh, some of the mafurshim. Yimtzaehu besados of uchramim. And then another possibility, and uh, the language is very difficult here in the Gemara. I have an oskatan bezer davar acher, another approach is yim l'shevet le'ilanos. Then it's going to go straight to the trees. Yim la'artso, if it's for the land, then lezraim, it's for seeds. Yim l'chesed, yimtzaehu borashich namaros, then it will fill up all of the pits in the ground. A very, I have to spend time on exactly what this Gemara is speaking about. Why, but why the, you spend so much time dodging the sukim with no halachic implications? Why, why, why do we need to have halachic implications? Huh? I just like, like it's like. Uh, we have a whole set of sfarim called, called the Medrash Rabbah. It's, it's a very little halacha Yeah. Okay. So the, the hashkafa answer to what you're asking about why we spend time analyzing things that have no halachic purpose is because afal p that it's true that in some cases we don't end up with a halachic conclusion, but we do end up with a better glimpse of, a, of how a Kodesh Baruch Hu wants us to understand the psukim, which in turn gives us a better glimpse into a Kodesh Baruch Hu. The nuance they're in, but that's really what learning is all about. Of course, the Gemara says in Kedushin that we learn, of course, it should lead to Maisa, but but overarchingly, the way that we look at Tanakh and the way that we look at our, our analysis of Tanakh, the Gemara Ki'ilu is the, when you have this love letter, is that you read it over and over and over again to catch every nuance. When she says she loves spending time with me, does that mean she loves me? We're medayik. We try to figure out exactly what's going on. So that's what we're doing here, even if there are no halachic consequences. Says the Gemara, third of the way down, Bimei Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachmeni, have a kafna umosna. There was both a kafna and a mosna. Kafna is a, is a drought of some kind, and a mosna was some type of pandemic that was killing people. Okay. Amre, hechi navi, what should we do? Neboi rachamea tarte lo efshar. We're not allowed to daven for both. Really? I daven for a lot of things all the time. So we have to see, this is quoted in Shulchan Aruch, this case. So we'll discuss this in a minute. We'll have to figure out why the Gemara says that we can't daven for two things at once. So therefore, uh, Rav Shmuel Bar Nachmeni recommends, Ella, what we should do is, they boy amos. No, we should daven, not to die. The Chafna Nispal, and we'll just have to deal with the fact that there isn't a lot of food, that there's a drought. Amr Luhu Rav Shmuel Bar Nachmeni, Rav Shmuel Bar Nachmeni, uh, said to one of the Rabbanim, he wasn't the one who said the first thing, it was another person. So he says back, no. We should daven specifically to get food uh, on the drought. When a Kodesh Baruch Hu will give us that which will satiate us, he has to give us life to follow. What are you going to give us food and then kill us all? That doesn't make any sense. The, the Pasuk says, who does give, and then you must be a You have to be chai. You have to be a chai in order to be the beneficiaries of that. And that's why the Gemara says that if you have these two things, that you should daven for the one that will actually feed you, because then he's less likely to take your life. Says the Gemara halfway down. How do we know that we're not supposed to daven for two things at the same time? Says the Gemara. Uh, the pasuk. Uh, the pasuk reads. That's what the Pesach says, Al -zos. on this, singular, because we're only davening for one thing. They have a different Pesach, the Pesach reads, that we're going to daven, we're going to ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu from Hashem, on this one thing, that there's really more than one thing. Okay, how does this work? So this is quoted in Shulchan Aruch uh, in regards to the halachos of Tainios, that we're not allowed to daven for two things at once. I don't know how this works. 
I don't know. You have to ask your local Orthodox. I have no idea. You got to ask. But it is in Shulchan Aruch. This way quoted, uh, it actually quotes the Pasuk of Vinatsuma Univaksha in, in the Shulchan Aruch. That when we're davening for, it, it seems like catastrophe type of things, not like, you know, I need your I need your help with work and I need your help with my kid. I don't think it's quite like that. I think they're more grandiose that apply to the Tzibur. It's my, me talking. I didn't see that anymore. I'm just, there weren't a lot of commentaries and I didn't spend enough time on it to give a full a full grasp of understanding, but that is what the Shulchan Aruch writes. It says the Gemara Bimei Reb Zera Gazer Zera. There was a uh, time when the uh, when the uh, in, by Reb Zera when the the non-Jewish government made Zera against the Jews. The Gazer the the Lola Mesa Bita Anesa. Not only did they give you the bad news, but they knew that the Yidden would fast in order to to storm the heavens. So they said, nope, the Lola Mesa Bita Anesa. They're not allowed to fast. Amar Lehu Reb Zera. I've got an idea. The Kabla Ilavan. We're going to accept it upon ourselves to fast in the future. When the gzera actually is uh, dissolved, then we'll actually do the fasting. So that's a little bit of a harama. So they said that during the year of Tafshin Pei Beis, you're not allowed to fast. So fine, I agreed to fast on, uh, on the, the 30th day of Tishrei. No problem, Tafshin Pei Gimel. So well, that's what they did. They committed for the future. How, so how do we know that that works? <laughs> I, what if I need the problem solved now? If I if I accept upon myself to fast in a year, does that work for right now? Says the Gemara, Amre le they said him in Nolacha. How do you know that this actually works? That I can agree in the future to fast, and it actually places its effect right now. Amr lehu, because I have a pasuk that that speaks about this. The chesiv the pasuk says, Vayomar elayel alti rad Daniel. Daniel, don't you worry. Kimin hayomar rishon asher nasata slipcha lahabin ulasam zikne alukecha. From the day that you give your heart to understand and to fast before Hashem nishmuud barecha. Not that you fasted yet, but when you agree to fast, then the impact will be had, a beautiful idea. And that's what the Gemara says is based on the Pasuk. The Gemara continues, we're about five lines before the middle with lines. Even in times of uh, famine, like it was in the times of Elio, and there was rain on Fridays, Fridays are a bad day to have rain. Everybody's running around, they're schlepping, they're trying to get, figure everything out. They got to get chalas, they got to get flowers, whatever they're doing, they're running around. It's uh, similar that uh, the rain should not happen. What's Yoma Dedina? Take a look at Rashi. Rashi is almost exactly halfway down on the inner column there. On the days of Mondays and Thursdays, which is when uh, Bate Din would come and sit down. So those days, uh, every, everything was so busy on those days. People had Dine Torah, they had Shilas, they could only ask the Bate Din, whatever the case may be. Those days were bad days to have rain, so is Arab Shabbos. Last of the short lines, Amar HaMemar, Elo Ditzarech Libriyosef, we didn't need the rain for the, for the sake of creating things, for the sake of the world to run. But Inan Rachame, we would have asked HaKadosh Baruch Hu to get rid of the rain. The rain's annoying, except that we need it. So therefore, we have to daven for it. That's what this whole Masechda started with. It was making sure that we actually know what we're talking about when we say Mashi Baruch Mer Geshem and we say Talamato de Racha. And that is what the Gemara says. The sun on Shabbos is like charity for the poor people. Very interesting Gemara, very short. We're going to see a whole bunch of statements of Rav Yitzchak one after the other. Here's the next one. The day of rain is good. Not only does the ground absorb the water and it's good for the ground, but it's good for all of your parnasas. <laughs> it extends the bracha not only on the ground, but even for that which is in your pocket. Bama Rav Yitzchak, another comment from Rav Yitzchak, in a bracha very interesting idea. I'm sure there's this deeper than what it sounds like. But bracha does not exist unless it's something that's removed from your eyes. Shnemar Yitzav Hashem Yitzcha Es Habracha VeOsamecha. Osamecha normally means a granary or a storage house, but it also has the language of Samui Ayin, someone who is a Samui they can't see. And as well, we have the same idea in another Gemara Tana Debe Rishmal Ein Habrachos In Habracha Mitzuya Ela B'Davar Sheino Ayin Sholet Tespo. The only time we have bracha found is when it's in something that you can't see. Shnemar Same pasuk Yitzav Hashem Yitzcha Es Habracha VeOsamecha. Again, a deeper idea. Tana Rabbanu Hanichnas Lamud, this is not lil mode, but Lamud to measure. A person who goes in to measure as Garneau, his granary, he's going to go measure all the food that he has in his storage house. What should he say? He should say a tefillah. Omar, what should he say? The tefillah is like this. Eight, nine lines from the bottom of Chesmet Beis. Uh, 
Uh, please, Hashem, Shetishtach Bracha B'Maseh Adenu, you should give us a blessing in our house. Hischel Amod, if you already, if you are in the process of counting, Omer, Baruch HaSholech Bracha B'Kri Hazeh, thank you for giving me the blessings that are in this pile. Now, Modad V'Achar Kach Birech, what if you said this, Yehi Ratzon, after, after you finish tallying, all right, you got your one, two, three, four, you're making tick marks, one, two, three, four, five, Baruch HaShem, you're so amazing, Hashem. What if you give the Bracha afterwards? Harei Zut Filas Shov. We have this language in Maseches, Brachos as well, that sometimes your tefillah is a little bit too late. Uh, we have this halachically as well. Once you've picked up the lul of an esrog, big uh, dilasan, the way that you're supposed to hold them, you can no longer make a bracha. You put on tefillin, that's a shaila. So the post can say by tefillin and by tzitzis, you, know, you mash mashan, you move them around and you make a new bracha. But by and large, because you can still fulfill the mitzvah afterwards, but by and large, once a mitzvah has been fulfilled and it's a momentary mitzvah, so then you are done for. And here as well, the Gemara calls this a tefillah shav. Why? Seven lines from the bottom. Everything that's already been done in the past, that's done already. Only that which is unknown to you, that the eye hasn't seen yet. That's when we make our tefillahs at the two dots. Five lines from the bottom, kibbutz gaisos. So the person still can say, Baruch Hashem, and that's all so you should, but the, here, if you look at the initial language of the bracha, it says shetishlach bracha that that which I'm about to do, I want you to send bracha only because it was uh, it was some mean and you didn't know what was there, so you went in with the tefillah. I'm hoping that when I count, that I have a lot, which is interesting, anyways, because the, whether or not you know what's in there, the volume is already capped. So that's all right. But the Gemara does not ask that question. And if that's where you were going, it's a great question. But the Gemara is just saying that you have to do the Yehi Ratzon beforehand. By the way, we should just be clear. Um, there's no Baruch to Hashem here. It doesn't seem from the Gemara that there's no Baruch to Hashem here. It just seems to be pretty simple that it's a Yehi Ratzon. But still, the concept of Tzilas Shav is that you've missed the opportunity. Um, but your, your question is still good because uh, we should have really... It's just a Yehi Ratzon, but it still doesn't matter because it, it is uh, seemingly a Tfilas Shav. Uh, inside the two dots here is a mnemonic to remember the next many sugas. So yes, Kibbutz, Gaisos, Tzedakah, Parnas, that is going to be your Simon. That's your mnemonic. Amr of Yochanan. Kibbutz Galios. Wow, okay. The day that it actually rains uh, at the right time is similar to Kibbutz Galios of the collection of all of the exiles. What's Pshat? Shinemar, the Pasuk we say in the Shira Malus before benching. This is the minig of the shla. It's the say shir amalus on Shabbos and Yantav, and actually is the custom as well, seemingly an equal custom to say al naharos bavel during the week. The shla doesn't distinguish. When I was in camp as a little kid, we used to sing a nigan al naharos bavel. It was a beautiful. I think it's a Sephardic nigan. It's beautiful. I remember it as a kid, and I never say it now. Why not? Nobody says it. But on Shabbos, everybody says shir amalus. What? Because usually during the three weeks camp. Uh, it, no, the shla, no, the shla was just making a point. We did it every day in, in camp. It wasn't just the three weeks. We did it every day in camp. Huh? And we did the same camp as Tuesday. I'm just saying we said it all month long, and I was there for two months out of most summers, and we said it all the time because that's the din. That's the din. That's the minig. I should say that was the minig of the shla. It's weird that we don't do it. I don't know why we don't do it, but it should be the case that if you're going to say one, you should say the other. If you say shir malos on Shabbos, you should bechora say al naros bavel. Ask your local Orthodox rabbi. Oh, it's so good not being a post Let's go. Says the Gemara. Amar Rabbi Yochanan Gad Yom Hashem Kiyom Kiyom Kibbutz Gad Shem Amar Shuv Hashem Es Shvi Seinu that Hashem is returning our captives. Ke Afikim Ba Negev. What's Afikim? They ain't Afikim Ela Matar like the rain that's in the desert. Shem Amar VeYaru Afike Yam. Okay. Makes it easier to walk through the dirt. It makes it all softer. Gaisos are troops. Uh, there are different pshatim in what's going on here, but that is what uh, that is what uh, the simple understanding of Gaisos are. Take a look at Rashi, 12 lines from the bottom. Gaisos, chayolos, shayata marve, talmi eretz, begeshem, yad gedudim, and it's easier for them to walk through. That's what Rashi says. People who pledge money and then they don't give. That's when, this, that's when the heavens stop as a past president of this fine institution. If you have any outstanding balances, uh, pony up. Because this is a problem. It causes for atziras kushamim. Shneemar, how do we know? Because the Pasuk says, Nisiim Viruach Vegeshem Ain, Ishmi Salel Bematas 
Bimatas Shoker. That person's a liar. He said that uh, that they was going to give and he didn't, and the rain is withheld. Last few <laughs> words on Testament base, turning to the top of Testament Aleph. Rav Yochanan, my dechsev, a famous Gemara. Wow, this Gemara is half of a fella requires Rishonim v'Achronim to understand. Aser ta aser, aser bishvil shetis asher. You want to become rich? Very simple. Give your miser. Ashkechei Rav Yochanan liyenuka de Reish Lakish. Rav Yochanan saw the son of Reish Lakish. At this time, Reish Lakish had died already. The story about Reish Lakish dying was that Rav Yochanan and he had a disagreement. Rav Yochanan gave him some kind of a look. He ended up becoming sick and subsequently dying. We'll see the impact of this conversation uh, other than the obvious, which is that Reish Lakish died. There's a, a secondary impact to what happened. Anyways, he sees the son of uh, Reish Lakish learning. Amar lei, eim ali psukecha. Tell me what pasik you guys are learning. He was a little kid. As a little kid, he's learning in Zilberman's and in, uh, in the old city. He's just pounding Pesukim. So he says, Amar aser ta aser. He says, I'm learning the Pesuk of aser ta aser. Amar le, who's talking now? You would have thought it was Rav Yochanan. Take a look at Rashi. Amar, uh, Amar le, uh, sorry, it's the second line of Rashi. Amar Yenuka le Rav Yochanan. He continues talking. The child says to Rav Yochanan, my aser taser. So let's go back in the Gemara. Amrle amai psukecha. Rav Yochanan says, "What pasuk are you learning?" The kid answers, "Aser taser." The kid continues, "Amrle umai aser taser." What's shot in the pasuk? He says to Rav Yochanan, "This is the kid of Rav, of Rish Lakish to Rav Yochanan." So he says, "Amrle aser bishvil shatis aser." You want to become rich? Give my aser. Amrle minalach. How do you know? So Rav Yochanan gives a crazy answer. Amrle zil nasi. Go out and try it. But really, just just go out and try it. What, what, what's happening here? Amar the kid says back to Rabbi Yochanan, What you get to just you get to just test things, like throw the spaghetti at the wall and see if Hashem is actually telling the truth. The pasuk says, You can't test Hashem. Amar le, This is the exception to the rule when it comes to Meiser. Test me on this. Amar Hashem tzibakos. If I don't open up the storehouses of the heavens, I'm going to give you endless amounts. My ad die. What does that mean? Until you have so much money that you don't know what to do with it. Someone this morning came over to me. I was at a bris and they said, do you have any money? I am collecting for whatever. I said, I'm sorry, I don't have any money. And he gave me this bracha. He didn't know his daf. I said, did you learn today's daf? Because it's mamish, today's daf. He said, you should have so much money in your house that when you open the doors, you can't even open it. There's money behind the door. You're stuck. And then you can give it to me. That was his uh, vort that, would be, that he gave to me. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if that's shot in the Gemara, but that, anyways, my ad ad believe died that your your sif so sechem below mar dies so much. Amar le yihavas mati hasam. The Talmud says back to Rav Yochanan, if I was with you lehai psuka when you guys learned that pasuk lo havias tzrich nalach, I wouldn't have needed you. He says to Rav Yochanan, ule hoshaya rabach or for your Rebbe. Another conversation between the child of. Rish Lakish and Rav Yochanan, one third of the way down, approximately Testament Aleph Pesu Ashkech Rav Yochanan Linuka the Rish Lakish the Yosiva Amar. He was reading the following pasuk: Yvelas Adam Tesalev Darkov Al Hashem Yiz Af Libo. That when a person does something wrong and they get punished, they get angry at Hashem. So Yosi Rav Yochanan Vakamatama. Rav Yochanan said, "This is a pasuk in Tanach, as a, in Nach, excuse me. And whenever there's something in Nach, it needs to have some of its roots in Chumash." So Amar Mi Ika Midi, is there such a case in the Chumash? The Chsivi Be the Lo Ramizi Be Oraisa. How could there be something that's in Ksuvim, that's in Nach, but not reflected back in the actual five books of Moses? So says the Gemara, Amar Le, the Talmud says, Atu Ha, Mi Lo Ramizi. We have a Pasuk that speaks about this. Vaksiv, the Pasuk says, Vaetzi Liba Meyachar, Du Ish Elachiv, Lemor Mazos, Asa Elokim. Lanu, it's what the brother said about Yosef. Look what Hashem, it's not what Hashem did to you, you did something to you. So same as the Pasuk that we saw in Tanakh. So Dal A9, now we know about Rav Yochanan that he had very long eyelashes. It's a famous Gemara. And he had this special instrument that would help him to pick up his eyes. The problem is that the last time he picked up his eyes, he killed Reish Lakish. So all of a sudden, Dal A9 V'chazabe, he started to pick up his head to look at the kid because the kid had a point. And all of a sudden, mom swooped in, you know, like hovering mom. And she's like, whoa, the mother came in, grabbed the kid by his ear. She's like, we are out of here. No more of this conversation. Get out of here before what happens to your father happens to you. This was the mother of Reish Lakish pulling him out. End of conversation. Some say that's why he was able to sit by the mikvah because he had the long eyelids and he couldn't see the ladies. Oh, 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 but that they were looking at him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Nice. Very good. Very good. Okay. That's a great argument. What is this little Oskatan base here? What does that say? Tzarechlomar ve'omar Rebbe. Okay. Ve'omar Rebbe Yochanan. Matar bishvil yachir. Rain can be given even for one, but parnasa bishvil rabin. Parnasa is given on a grand scale. Difficult to understand what that means. Parnasa is given on a grand scale. I know poor people and rich people. Okay, so I mean it's given on a grand scale. So we'll see how the sheet does in the Gemara, but this is what he says. Let's let's try and figure this out. Matar bishvil yachid. How do we know that water, that rain will be given even for one? Hashem licha. He's got even one person, the Khan the singular. Parnasa Bishvil Rabim, the Khzib Hinani Mamtir Lachem Lechem from the from the Psukim that speak about the man, that I'm going to shower upon you in the plural Lachem bread. Mesbi, the Gemara asks a lengthy question. The, the punchline of the question is four lines from the bottom of the page. But in the meantime, it's a good story. It says what the what the Gemara says. We have a Braisa. Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Huda Omer, Shlosha Parnasim Tov and Mamdul Israel. There were three great leaders of the Jews, happened to be siblings. Eluhe Moshe of Aaron and Miriam. Very good, very good family. Good stock. Says the Gemara. And there were three wonderful gifts that were given by, on, I should say, through Megal and Ali de Zakai, through those three people. We know, of course, that the Be'er, the well, and the clouds, uh, the Anan and and the Mun. Be'er bischus Miriam. We know that the well was, was of course, bischus Miriam. And Amud Anan bischus Aaron. The cloud of glory was because of Aaron. And Mun bischus Moshe. Mesa Miriam, when she died, Nistalaka Be'er, then all of a sudden, the Be'er was no longer accessible. Shanem Arvatamos Sham at Miriam. Uchzi Basri Beholaya Maim Lohaya. So we know that with her death came the absence of the well, but the well came back because of Moshe and Aaron were still alive, even though she died, but we were able to get back the benefits of the, of the Be'er because of these two. Mace Aaron, when he died, that they heard something, that the, the, the Kenani, Melech Arad, heard something. Mashmua Shama, says the Gemara, 15 lines from the bottom, Shama Shemes Aaron, and Nistalku Anani Kabot. He heard that Aaron died, and now the protection of the Jewish people was gone. The Kasavur, and he made an erroneous thought, Nitna lo He thought that therefore Akadosh Baruch Hu was saying, Green light, now you can go attack the people. That's what the Pasuk says, that they saw, everybody saw, the people saw, key that that Gava Aaron, that Aaron died. Ki Meshamesh Ba'arba Lashon is the key in this Pasuk. It says by Yiru Kolaida Ki Gova Aharon. And there's four possibilities. E, it could be E, if, Dilma, perhaps, Ella, that, or Daha, that. And uh, so therefore they misunderstood the Pasuk. Basically, they understood the Pasuk that now I can actually see through the clouds because there are no clouds anymore. Therefore, I can kill them. That was the Havamina of, of, of Melech Harod. So that's what, that was a possibility, but then it came back anyway. Moshe. Then the Be'er, which was lost because of Miriam, and the Anonim that were lost because of Aaron, they all came back because Moshe was amazing. Mes Moshe nistal kukulam. When he died, now all three siblings were gone. Then all of them were gone. All three of these shepherds died in one month. That's not true, says the Gemara. Six, seven lines from the bottom, first long line. They died. Yerach. They died in one month. That's not true. They all died in different months. Ella says the Gemara, Why did they all die in different months? Ella says the Gemara, Why did they all die in different months? These three wonderful gifts uh, were nisbatu. They were canceled. They all happened to die out in the same month that Moshe died. They all happened to die out in the same month that Moshe died. Alma, that these wonderful things, Ashkechan, what do we find? Parnasa bishvil yachid. What did we say 15 lines ago that Parnas is only for the Rabbim? Yet we see that all of these wonderful things, the Mun in particular and the Be'er, those are actual forms of Parnasa. They all came about because of a Yachid, because of Moshe Rabbeinu Kasha. So the Gemara answers four lines from the bottom. And it's an obvious answer. Moshe is a little different. Shiny Moshe. He wasn't asking for himself. He was asking for the people. Therefore, it's as if the people themselves asked. The Gemara moves on to a couple of stories connected to the Pasuk that we just quoted. Rav Huna bar Manoach. Rav Shmuel bar Idi. Rav Chia Mivastanya. These three great people. They were Tamidim in the Shir of Rava. 
the Rabba. When Rabba died, they switched into the next shear. They went into Rav Papa's shear. Also, the Kamei de Rav Papa. The problem is that uh, they were used to Rabba's style of teaching, and they were used to the quickness and sharpness of Rabba. So what happened was, kol emas da hava amar lehu shmaisa. Whenever Rav Papa would say to them something that was below hava mistabra lehu, and it wasn't quite as clear as the way Rabba would have taught it, hava miramze uh, ahadade. They looked at each other. They're like, ah, never. You know, Rapapa, he could have done a little bit better. And Chalash Daite, that was something that was very hard for him, turning to the top of Testament Bays. Anyways, Akaryuba Bechalme, he had a dream that night. Uh, he heard about this Pasuk, about the three shepherds. When they were leaving him, when they were leaving Mine, the Rebbe, Omar Luhu, the Rebbe said to them, he gave them a bracha because he was afraid what the Pasuk had taught us already, that all three of them died. So he was afraid that they were going to have an onish min hashamayim. So he gave them a bracha that... They were kind of making fun. It's probably not the right language. They, they, they left a, sh- a little look on their face that maybe Rav Papa wasn't as clear as Rava, which is a lack of covet, a tremendous lack of covet. Even if we don't like something that we hear from a Rav, it's always done, mamish, with the highest levels of covet. Fine. That brings us to the two dots on Testament based three lines down. Rav Simi Barashi, Rav Shliach Kamed Rav Papa. Rav Simi Barashi was learning in the same share of Rav Papa. Rav Makshali too, but used to ask a lot of questions. Yom Achad. One day, One day he saw that Rav Papa was saying Tachanun. Uh, say, saying Tachanun. Oh, that's good. And Shame, and he heard him say the Amar as follows. What was he saying during his Tachanun? Rachmana Litzlan Mikisufa de Shimi. This person, Rav Simi, I should say, the Simi, the Simi Bar, bar Ashi. He said, Hashem, please save me, Mikisufa, from the embarrassment of Simi. He's asking me so many questions. He's putting me on the spot, and I don't know all the answers. He's embarrassing me. Instantly, when Rav Simi heard that, Kabila Leish Dikusa Vesulo Akshadai, he was done. <laughs> he didn't realize he was embarrassing his Rebbe. So he stopped right away and he stopped asking questions. It's funny because this sharply contrasts the idea that we know of Habay Shalom Lamed. We're typically of the uh, cultural opinion and certainly the mission of Perkei that one should ask a lot of questions. That's typically the gateway to knowledge is to ask questions. It's the gateway to clarity. I think the, the, this would be the anomaly instead of being the norm. The Gemara says, Rish Lakish Savar Matar Bishvil Yachid. He as well agrees that rain is even for one, one person, which was similar to the previous Shita, Tamar the Rish Lakish, because he says, Minayin the Matar Bishvil Yachid. How do we know that rain will come about even for one person? Because the Pasuk says, Shalom Hashem Matar Ba'is Malkosh, Hashem Ose Chazizim, Hashem will make Chazizim, which are clouds. We're going to analyze that word soon. Umatar Geshem Yitain Lahem Leish Esev Besade. Yachol Lakol. You might have thought that maybe this isn't true for a Yachid. It's true for all. Talmud Omar, the Pasuk says Le'ish. The Pasuk says Le'ish Esa B'sadet. Even for one person, namely, rain can happen for even one person. But Tanya, the Brisa writes, Ili'ish Yachol L'chol Sadosa, within one person. Maybe we would have said, okay, if Kerish owns a couple of fields, it's all of the Kerish fields. That's how Hashem works. Says the Gemara, no, it's even more nuanced. Talmud Omar, Sadeh. Even one field if an owner has 10 fields, even one field can get the gift. What about my, my field numbered, field number one? Says the Gemara, not even the whole field, Tamil number Asev. Even one part of the, of the field could even get its own customized version of the rain. He had the Rav Daniel, last of the short lines on Testament Bays, like Rav Daniel Barkatina said, Havale Hahu Ginta. He had a garden. He had a, let's call it a multi acre field. Kol Yoma, every day, Hava Azil Sire Bay. He would walk up and down all of the rows and Sire Bay, he would look out and see what was needed. Omar, Hameshra Bayamaya. This particular row, that one's going to need some water. Vaha, you know, the second row, Hameshra Lo Bayamaya. The Asa Mitra, the Kamashke, Kol Hecha Dimi Boy, Lemaya, exactly where the rain needed to be. That's where the rain was, down to the actual row, the individual row of, of vegetation. Okay. What does the Pasuk mean when it said Chazizim? My Hashem Ose Chazizim. So it says the Gemara Amar of Yosi, Reb Chanina. Every tzaddik gets a cloud. Okay. Uh, what does that mean? My chazizim. Amar of Yehuda Porchos. It's a certain type of cloud. When we were little kids, we learned about Sirius and I don't even remember all the phrases anymore. Different types of clouds. The ones, there's like the puffy ones and there's the lines or the regular classical ones that we always drew as kids. So what are we talking about here? Amar of Yochanan, Simon the Matar, Porchos. We know that rain is coming when we see these types of clouds that are Porchos. Well, what are Porchos? Well, how do we describe them? How, what do they look like? My Porchos, one third of the way down, five lines into the wide lines, Testament Bays. My Porchos, Amar of Papa, Eva 
Eva Kalisha, thin clouds, to say underneath Eva Smichta, uh, under thicker clouds. So sometimes we can even see that the lower clouds are moving faster, and we can see the clouds above through a little bit of a piercing in the in the clouds. That's what we define. Amar Rav Yehuda, Nehila Mekame Mitra. If you have a light rain before a heavy rain, if it drizzles before a heavy rain, so then Asi Mitra, you know that's going to be a longer gezunt rain. However, Basar Mitra, if the slow rain comes, if the drizzle happens after the big rain, Pasig Mitra is going to be very short. Mekame Mitra, Asi Mitra. Mikame Mitra Asi Mitra. So says the Gemara, if you have a Mikame Mitra Asi Mitra, that if it's going to be before, if the light rain happens before the large rain, it's going to bring a brow rain. This is similar to a sieve where they would sometimes separate uh, flour or whatever they're using with a sieve, and there were always smaller particles followed by the bigger particles. So that's for sure true back in the day. The way that we have all of our flour refined, it really is pretty homogenous by the time we get it. It's been ground up very nicely. But that's not the way that their flour was ground up. So there was always a super powdery part, I guess, equivalent to confectioner's sugar, super fine. And then there was the larger granules. That's what the Gemara says is the comparison. And the bus or Mitra, Pasig Mitra, what about the fact that the light rain that happens after the rain, where do we learn that from? The Simanich Charya to easy. This is an unpleasant uh, piece of Gemara halfway down. Let's take a look at Rashi. Charya de Izi. This is the way that an A's that a goat would defecate. Rashi says, Dibarma, First, the defecation would be significant. And then it would be less so. So that's how the Gemara says that we understand, or at least we have a comparison of the small amount of rain following the larger rain. Two dots halfway down. Ula ikla lebavel, chaza porchos. He goes into Bavel, he looks up in the sky. All of a sudden, he's a meteorologist. He's like, I know these clouds. It's going to rain. Amar lehu, penu mani dehashta asimitra. Penu mani, kama, dehashta asimitra. You guys should get every everything that's going to get ruined in the rain. Um, uh, tonight at the table, one of my, uh, we, we were, had a soda bottle on the table and it was only partially open and someone knocked it over. It sprayed Coke everywhere, all over the place. Maybe I shouldn't be drinking Coke. So the Gemara says he knew the rain was coming. So he said that I get everything out of the field. And Lesof, what ended up happening? Lo Asimitra, there was no rain. <laughs> so Amar ki hechi de mishakre bavloi, just like the Babylonians are known for being a bunch of liars, hachi mishakre mitrai, their own their own meteorology rules don't apply as well. Porchos should bring about rain, but it didn't in this case. They weren't following the regular rules. He said this about the Babylonians. Yeah. Amar ki hechi de mishakre bavloi, just like the Babylonians are liars, so too the rules about their own clouds don't even follow the, the culture. I don't know. Does that work? Can you nurture the clouds to not do? Okay, that's what the Gemara seems to imply. Huh? We could do some rain dancing, Danny. I agree. I agree. Let's do it. Ula ikla la bavel. So when Ula was once in Bavel, Chazi, Malay tzana de tamri bezuza. He saw they were selling a full basket of dates for one zoo, super inexpensive. So then he's like, uh, I'll skip the line. Omar, Malay tzana de duvsha bezuza. You're able to buy food for so cheap and it's tasty. Ubavloi lo aske bel rice. How could you not learn Torah all day long? It's easy. You don't have to go make a whole complicated meal. Go buy all of this food for a zoo. Sit there, pound it, and go back to the base measures. You should be learning. Belilah, he ate the whole thing. And Belilah Tsaru, oh, the stomach pains. They were terrible. Shooting stomach pains. He was crippled over in pain. Oh, so then he changed his tune altogether. Omar, Maletzana de Sakina Bezuza. It's like buying a whole, a whole uh, container of knives for Azuzu. Bavloy Aske Torah. Now they are learning Torah. How do they ever learn Torah? It's so hard to eat this food. Okay, so he learned his lesson. We're almost two thirds of the way down. Testament base. We're going to go a little bit more, and we're going to stop at the parentheses, about six, seven lines from the bottom, and then we'll stop. Tanya, the Brisa writes, Rabbi Eliezer Omer, Kola Olam Kulo Mimeme Okainu Sushose. All of the drinking water comes from the ocean. Shenem Arveid Yalamin Ars Vishka is called Paneho Adama. That's the pasuk he uses as his ride that we drink from the ocean. Now, Rabbi Yeshua doesn't agree. We recently had a machlokas, Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua, but here's another one. Amar the Rabbi Yoshua, the halo, mime okainus meluchenheim. That water is salt water. You can't drink salt water. Salt water will make you thirstier because the salt is going to make you thirsty. It doesn't work. So Amar lo, memaskin ba'avin, they become sweeter up in the clouds. By the way, this is true that when there's evaporation, the salt does not come with. When we were little kids, we did this in school. They gave you a string and a stick and you hung it over a, a pot of water. You put a lot of salt in it. You would boil it. It would build this like salt type of shape that was uh, collected on the wire. All the water was gone, but all the salt remained. As we saying that evaporation doesn't pick up the salt as well. Maybe minute pork, anything? No, it's nothing. The salt wouldn't, it wouldn't evaporate at all. The salt would stay. So when it evaporates, says Rabbi Eliezer, 
He says, I'm right. Rabbi Yeshua argues. Rabbi Yeshua, Omer, Kola Olam Kulami Maim Ho'el Yonim Hushosa. We get waters from the upper heavens. Shneemar, the Matar Ashamayim Tishtemayim. It's going to come from upstairs. Elamani Makayim. How then does Rabbi Yeshua answer the, the most obvious question? What does the Pasuk mean? Ve'ed Yalamina Aretz. Says the Gemara, Melami Shah, Nanami Skarbim Ve'olam Larakia. The clouds get stronger. They go up into the heavens. Upos and pian kinod. They open the top of the cloud like a pitcher, like a container. Umekavlin may matar. And from the heavens, they receive into the pitcher like a spigot from from uh, the upper heavens. Shene emar as the pasuk writes. Let me just read it properly. Yazoku matar leedo that the water is going to be poured in like a pitcher. Umenu kavos hein kikavra and it was punctured. It had little holes in it like a sieve of some kind. Uvos machar shos maim al gabe karka and the water would drip through there. Shenem archash ras maim avay shechakim. Bein bein tipa le tipa elakim lo nima. The gap between. One drop and another sometimes is nothing more than a hair's breadth. Lelamercha, what does this come to teach us? That the godless of a day of rain is similar to that of the creation of the world. These psukim we saw in this regard earlier, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu does great things without the ability to investigate them. We cannot understand the depth of their uh, of their wonderment, that Hashem gets rain all over the ground. Don't you know and didn't you hear? That there is no possibility to understand how amazing a Kodesh Baruch Hu is. We're going to stop right here. We'll pick up Emir Hashem tomorrow night with Daf Yud. Wishing you all a beautiful night.